ready here. Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy New Year. It is Saturday morning, multifamily unplugged, and we are back for another round. Hey, it was nice to have a week off, huh, Carl? It sure was. I needed it. Yeah. Hey, multifamily unplugged, the number one Saturday morning radio show for the real estate investor and the property management professional. Hey, go wake somebody up right now. Tell them to grab their coffee and get on. And we got uh, an action-packed show for you this morning. Listen, this is where we dive into raw and unscripted conversation about multifamily real estate, property management, and other current effect, uh, events that affect business uh, this past week and are going to affect business moving forward through the new year. Hey, two topics that really deserve a lot of no fluff conversation, but factual data. You know, I'm tired of, of going to seminars and things like that and getting a lot of fluff and upsell and not getting enough meat. So one thing that I know that Carl and I are, are uh, really committed to this year is bringing meat and helping, uh, helping your business grow. So, uh, so like I said, go tell somebody we're on the air, go wake them up right now. Make sure that uh, you get your questions in the chats this morning. If you have something you want to talk about, something that you need some advice on, we are, we are, um, sorry about that. Um, but every week, my co-host and I, Moose, C. Gordon Moose, who we proudly call Moose, are here. <laughs> We bring you over 50 years of multifamily experience. Happy New Year, Carl. Hey, thanks, Mike. I appreciate it, man. Man, how's your holidays been? It's been really good. You know, I'm in, I'm in Cleveland. You know, I live in Chicago, but I'm in Cleveland now visiting my folks. Uh, they're 91 years old, which I want to talk a little bit about that, too, because we're going through a lot of stuff with their estate and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, no, everything's good. Yeah, good, good. Well, let me get to that. So, hey, remember this morning, we are sponsored by My Core Intentions. My Core Intentions coaching and training platform brings you some of the best coaching and training that you're going to be able to receive in the multifamily space. Whether you're a brand new investor, whether you're a seasoned investor, we have five events planned this year. We're going to do four one-day boot camps. One will be free. And uh, don't forget, you could go to my website and download my book for free right now, Exit Plan. So you can go to mycoreintentions.com forward slash exit plan, and you can download the e-version of my book. We are also brought to you today by Your Focus Guy. Your Focus Guy is uh, the founder and uh, owner is Moose, Carl, and he has a 10x focus on mindset training and personal productivity, and he'll talk a little bit more about that today. So a little bit of housekeeping here. Uh, we don't have any guests this morning, but just so you know, two weeks from now, we have a multifamily uh, uh, guest going to be on. We're going to talk about small multifamily and getting started in the business. And listen, please go to social media, follow us on all the show, social media platforms, like us on YouTube and help our ratings if you would. Glad you're here. Hey, good to see you this morning, Mandy, Charlie, Eddie, what's going on? How are you? Glad you guys are here today. So a um, couple things. Hey, you know, Carl, it's kind of interesting. 2021, where the heck did the last couple of months go? It feels, Carl, I'm going to tell you what, it feels like we just did the summit. Just I did know. the summit. And, and that was what? That was in October. When I that was in October. And, you know, for those people who might have an interest, we're planning to do the summit again in October, this coming October. So... I think that dates are the 21st to the 23rd is what we have on the calendar for those. So make sure that you get registered. I know there's early bird tickets right now, so you can find those on the website. But that summit, you know, it seems like we just had it, but we, it was three days of action pack. You know, uh, you know what, it's so funny. I'm still getting calls about that. And I just had a conversation um, with my sister, believe it or not, you ready for this? My sister was a firefighter. She owns five or six houses. Okay. She's retired now. And we were sitting at dinner the other day and she goes, Hey, you know, I've been listening to these guys on Facebook and on, on YouTube. And she pulls up your face and she pulls up Danny's face. <laughs> and I said, yeah, that, that's my partner, Mike Morowski and, and Danny Barrero. Right. So she's like, yeah, I've been listening to these guys. They're really, they really got a lot of great information. 
<laughs> wow. Is that classic or what? That's isn't, good. Isn't that funny? And I told her, I'm like, you know, we did the summit in October. We had like 21 or 23 speakers from all over the country, you know, all multifamily experts, you know, written books, bought, you know, all this stuff. And she goes, yeah, I was thinking about doing that, but I never registered. I'm like, come on, Lisa, why didn't you do that? <laughs> oh my goodness. That was pretty funny. That's but no, that funny. was really, I mean, Listen, I and you and I've talked about this before, Mike. I wish that when I was getting started, somebody had organized a, a summit like that, or I had the opportunity to, you know, mentor or coach with someone that has that much, you know, that much of experience. Because I'm telling you right now, I would have saved over the course of my investing yeah. career, it probably would have saved me hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, honestly, about you know everything from money I could have saved at closing, or I could have renegotiated at closing to management mistakes I made. And there's just so many variables in real estate that when you don't have, when you're doing it by yourself, you're going to miss stuff. I mean, you just are. Yeah. And you know, here's one thing I just want to say real quick. If anybody has any comments or they want any questions answered this morning, they need to chime in. Hey, uh, write something in the comment box. Remember that we're also on Zoom as well. So if you have, uh, if you've logged in before, that passcode is still the same on Zoom. So uh, you can get in on either platform and get your questions answered. But Carl, you know, I wanted to, uh, I know that you really want to kind of talk about leaving a legacy, you know, yeah, yeah. and, and I kind of want to edge into that by talking about hustle, you know, uh, you know, how do we leave a legacy and how do we build it from a hustle? You know, a lot of times people look at real estate as, Hey, you know, I have my W2 job and I'm out there working that every day. And, you know, I'm going to have my retirement's going to take care of me. Or is it really, you know, that's a question I always ask people, is it really? Cause you've seen what's happened over the last 20 years yeah. and what's going to happen in 20 years from now. Hey, what's going to happen in a year from now? Look what happened in the last 10 months. Right? So if you put this little hustle in place where you're doing some small multifamily deals, listen, I have really been looking into uh, small multifamily flips and I am confident that in the space between three and 15 unit deals, and maybe even a little bit bigger, but three to 15 unit deals, there is some really good opportunity out there. So if you want to think about a hustle, this could be a place to, to start to get involved in and really palatable for somebody to, uh, you know, to work through. But, you know, you talk, go ahead. I'm, I'm going to let no, you go no, and I, talk I, about I that gonna, legacy. Yeah. I was going to say, and, and, you know, my sister is a perfect example. My sister was on the fire force for 27 years. She started off as an EMT, driving ambulances, you know, as an EMT, and she kept getting, you know, educating herself, but she was on the force for 27 years. And over the course of that, she started buying houses, right? And she bought, now I think she has five or six houses. She's retired. So she's got her pension, but now she's got this and this was her side hustle, right? And, and for anybody that knows firefighters, probably more than anybody, you know, they have an opportunity to do a side hustle. You know, a lot of them are painters or electricians, or they have a little business on the side because they work, you know, 24 hours on and then they get 24 hours off. So they get that, you know what I mean? And, and, and they also have a nice base salary. So they're, you know, they can do it slowly because they're not depending on that side hustle to feed their families, right? So my sister is a perfect example and you don't have to be a firefighter. I mean, you you know, you, you might be a, a you might have a, a, du a dual income. You know, you and your right. your spouse. You know, so you know you have that base income. But you know, if you do one deal a year or one deal every two years, ten years from now you're going to have five or six properties. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now my sister, all my sister does now is she manages her properties, and they're I think they're all, I think she told me they're all low, less than thirty percent leverage. So she's got seventy percent equity in all of them. Um, you know, she's in a really good financial position on all the properties and they're, they're single family homes. They're not multifamily. She never went into multifamily just because, you know, she just knew the single family homes. Um, and, and she's done really, really well. And that is her, you know, that's, you know, she has her, her, um, pension, but that's also her side hustle. That's probably going to do better for her than her hustle, you yeah. know? Yeah. Hey, a couple things here. First, I want to shout out to Danny. Hey, good morning, Danny. How you doing? It's good to uh, good to see that you're up and listening. And Merrick, uh, glad that you're here. Thanks for chiming in on the chat. Hey, you know, Carl, I want to make a mention. You know, you were right. You don't have to just be a fireman to do this, right? Anybody can. But I want to 
I want to just mention, you know, a couple months back, we had a we had a guy on Tim Lyons was a guest yeah. of ours. Yeah, and I remember. Tim's a fireman on the New York City Fire Department. And if somebody wants to listen to that recording, it was really good. They can go on on uh, my core intentions YouTube channel and just search for multifamily unplugged a Saturday morning show. I want to say it was probably September or October before yeah. the summit. Yeah. And it's Tim Lyons. And that was a really good episode of, you know, somebody who got into business thinking, man, I'm not going to do this just by my pension. And they have good pensions, right? Yeah. The, yeah. So, you know, those types of employees have good, good pensions. So uh, he said, yeah, uh, look, I have to do this multifamily thing. And he started doing a deal. Now he's syndicating deals. So yeah, now I remember, do you remember he was talking about when he first got started, all the other guys in the firehouse were calling him, uh, you know, uh, they were, they made fun of him. You know, they were like, oh, what do you, you know, what do you think you are, Donald Trump or something like that? Yeah, and sure. now, don't you remember he said now they're all coming to him for advice. They're all yeah. coming and say, hey. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, isn't that funny? That's what happens. As soon as you're yeah. in the space and yeah. you get a couple things done under your belt, a couple successful, yeah. and they don't even have to be full turn deals. You know, right. you could just, you could be sitting and holding something and, and all of a sudden people get really interested in what you're doing. Well, and, and, and yeah. And let me, you know, that's, and my sister did the same thing. You know, she has all the fire, you know, the, all the buddies and all the people in her house. One guy's a painter, one guy's a roofer, one guy's an electrician, one guy's a plumber. So she would, and this talks about our networking, right? You know, you and I are big on networking, right? Building your network. And, 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 and my sister had a network right within her, her work and space where she gets these guys to come over and do her favors. Right. And, 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 they, you know, they charge her, but they charge her, you know, friends and family rates. So, um, and just like with, with the uh, lions, you know, he was like, yeah, all these guys are now, you know, they want to partner with me. They want to, yeah. you know, they want to hop on the bandwagon. So, and you and I both know that's the way it works when you're out there, you're active, you're taking action, right. You're, you're right. picking up the, the clues from other people leaving behind, you know, success leaves clues, as you always say, and, and you're, you're, you're other people, are, you're going to attract other people that want to be involved. Yeah. And, you know, for people who really like this conversation and want to be more involved in this conversation, Monday night meetup groups, you know, I, I, I run a couple of Monday night meetup groups. If, if you want information and I, are you still doing your meetup group? You know, I've taken a step back from that because I, I, I started something else with a couple of other guys. So I've taken a step back from doing those, but uh, until we're done with the 60 day, the 90 day um, thing that came out of the summit. Yeah. Okay. So in January, I'll probably pick those back up again. But yeah, I remember okay. you do you alternate, don't you? Do property management one Monday and and you do something else yep. on another Monday. Right? Yeah, I do multifamily um, mastermind and then I do uh, multi or property management mastermind and I alternate back and forth. And this year, I have a pretty good uh, I have a pretty good outline, pretty good schedule. I'll next week I'll kick it off with a uh, webinar on creating wealth in small multifamily properties. So is that this Monday? This Monday? No, no, not tomorrow. Uh, a week from tomorrow. Gotcha. So yeah, um, I'll kick it off with that. We'll be there Monday night, but uh, a week from Monday we'll kick it off with that webinar. So yeah, I've 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 sat in on a few of those phone calls. They're really good. Very a lot of great information. Yeah, yeah. So hey, so talk about the legacy piece. You know, you 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 yeah. kind of started to mention that you know your folks are older and and you know when you talk about leaving something, you know, it's generational wealth, right? Yeah, How do you create yeah. that legacy, that generational wealth? Um, it's, it's not even so much about what you can do in your lifetime, although you can do pretty well in your lifetime, but it's what, you know, a generation or two from now can do, right? Yeah. And it's interesting, you know, because I had an opportunity to ride with my dad um, for about five or six hours. We took a little trip he and I, and we we're talking about, and it went all the way back to his grandparents, right? So my great grandparents, and he was talking about my mother's grandfather who came to this country from Ireland, was a, the oldest son of a farmer and inherited four farms in Indiana, never worked the farms, but he was the oldest son, ended up selling the farms. Then he passed away and left two farms. He sold two farms, but left two farms to his wife, who was my grandmother, my mother's mother. She ended up, uh, you know, she got income from those for years and then finally sold those. And I'm talking about big farms. I mean, this, this was lots and lots of money. And eventually that all flowed to my mom. 
Right. Right. And now my mom's 90 and eventually some of that is going to flow to my, to us kids. There's six of us kids. And then we have children and we have, and I don't, yep. but my sister has uh, uh, grandchildren. Right. So it's, it's really, the, it's the legacy over like six generations that we're talking about here. And it was all structured, you know, it was, uh, they, they did it by design, right? They, you know, they have trusts, right? They have uh, living wills, which is different than a will. A living will doesn't go into probate. And I'm not an attorney. I'm not, you know, I'm just telling you what I experienced, right? And so my, thank God, my grand great grandfather set it up in trust, which have just flowed down through the generations and we'll continue that. And it's not difficult to do. And especially these days, you know, you can just Google, you know, how to set up a trust. And I think there's about 35 or 40 different types of trusts that the IRS, I think it's section 235 or something in the IRS code that's, that governs trusts. And there's about 35 or 40 different types of trusts, depending on what you're, you want to do. But you should really, it's never too early to look into that. And it's never too early to educate yourself, especially if you're serious about buying real estate. And, you know, Mike, I know you know this for sure, but I, I've met people that that have owned real estate in their own name. And I always recommend putting it into a trust, a real estate trust, because not only does it give you anonymity, people don't know who owns the property, but number two, it gives you protection. Right. You know, and if someone's... Not, it's not just uh, having the, you know, a lot of times people think, well, I have it in an LLC, that's enough protection. But you're right, Carl, about that. It's not. Hey, let me just do this really quick. And then I want you to come back and talk about that. But uh, Eva uh, on, in the chat asked, how can she join the Monday night meetup group. And I just want people to know that if you want to join that Monday night meetup group, you could go to meetup.com and search my group, Mike Morawski, or it might be under Michael Morawski, uh, uh, multifamily mastermind or property management mastermind. Both those groups are on Monday nights at seven. So go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. I just wanted to make sure she got her answer though. Yeah. And those are free. You can join meetup for free. Right. No yeah. right. And you can search. So yeah, that's really meetups a great platform. So anyway, the point is, you know, and it, it, it goes right to what you always talk about, Mike, you know, start with the end in mind, you know, look at your exit strategies, right. As you're getting into this, because, you know, when you buy that first piece of property, and I've seen this happen when I was in the bank, you know, a guy bought a property or a person, I should say, bought a property, then they bought another property, then they bought another property, they never got the proper advice. Next thing you know, they got 10 properties, and they're all in their own personal name. Right. And I said, what are you, are you out of your mind? Because if someone slips and falls on one property, they can take you down on all your properties, right? So I said, you need to put this in a trust right away, get it in a trust, get put everything in a trust. And you can literally live, you know, there's an old saying, wealthy people, truly wealthy people own nothing. They control everything through trusts, but they own nothing. Their name is on nothing, but they're the beneficiary of trusts. And that's how wealthy people do it. And you don't have to be a Rockefeller or a Bezos, right? You know, if you own property, Right, listen, I'm telling you right now, if you own property in your own name to, on Monday, do some research about how to put that into a trust or at least an LLC. I would recommend a trust. Get in touch with a trust attorney or, or somebody that you that knows that business and get that out of your own name because it, there's no benefit to you having it in your own personal name. Yeah. Right? And, you so, know, don't even wait till Monday. Right, Carl? I mean, you got yeah, yeah. your best friend these days is Google. And yeah. just go to Google and do some research on trusts and, you know, different types of trusts and what will work best for you and what you're trying to accomplish in your life. Yeah. And, and listen, as a banker, the banker doesn't care how you hold entity it, or, or, or how you hold the, uh, the title. It doesn't matter if it's in a, your personal name, a trust, an LLC, an LP, doesn't matter. So from that perspective, you lose nothing. Right. And, and the, the real benefit of a trust is that and a lot of people don't realize this, a trust um, if you have a living trust, it doesn't go to probate. So if you pass away, your assets don't have to go through the probate process, which is very expensive and very time consuming. If you just have a will, wills are governed by probate courts, right? A living trust is not. So, it, and I'm not, again, I'm not an accountant. I'm not an attorney. I'm not giving you advice. I'm just telling you what my own experience is. And, and we were just reviewing my parents. My parents said, we want you to review our documents and make sure they're up to date and make sure they're you know, that they really express what we want. And this is something that's really important. And it's never too soon to do that if you're buying property, seriously. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. So um, 
the uh, what about going out and getting financing, Carl? And I know your background is in the banking industry. If I have a trust and a trust owns my business and I don't want to go get financing in my personal name, uh, how do I can I do that through a trust? Can I do yeah. that through an LLC? Yeah, absolutely. The bank doesn't care how you hold title. The bank doesn't care. The bank is only and it depends if you're looking at a five flat and bigger or a five flat and smaller. Remember, a five flat or smaller is considered residential. Even if you're renting it out, you don't live there, it's still considered residential. So anything from a, a condo, single family home, two, three or four flat is considered a, uh, a residential piece of property from the bank's perspective. So the, they're gonna primarily look at whoever's behind that LLC or whoever's behind that trust. And they're gonna rely on your income and your credit score. Anything above a five unit, um, they consider commercial. So the primary thing that they look at is the net operating income and the expenses of the property itself as, a, as if it's an inanimate object that's just producing income. How you hold title, Mike, doesn't matter to the bank. The bank doesn't care. They're just going to look at whoever's behind the trust. And remember, real quick, you know, I'm, uh, this is, you know, within a trust, there's two terms that oftentimes get mixed up, the trustee and the beneficiaries, right? The trustee is it could be an attorney, it could be an accountant, it could be a friend of yours, it could be anybody that's responsible for managing the trust. The beneficiaries are the people that will benefit from whatever happens within the trust. So if it's a real estate and it's sold, the trustee is has a fiduciary duty by law to make sure that that transaction goes through according to the law. The beneficiaries of the profits might be, you know, that might be a husband and wife or it might be children or whatever. So those are two different terms that are very important to understand. The trustee is the is the manager of the trust. The beneficiaries are the people that benefit from the trust. So, okay. but to answer your question, to answer your question, Mike, the bank doesn't care if you hold the property in trust or LLC, it doesn't matter to the bank. Okay, okay, good. Is it, uh, is it easier or more difficult to, to process that loan and to go, you know, is there more paperwork? Is, it, is there more uh, scrutiny or due diligence on the bank's part? Well, the only thing the only thing that bank would like to see is the trust agreement, right? And that's that's just a, a document that they're very familiar with. Um, or if you're in an LLC, they're going to want to see the operating agreement. So they're just going to want to see what the how the trust is set up, how the LLC is set up. If you're in a limited partnership, an LLP, they're going to want to see the documents for that as well. Um, some people hold their their real estate. Say, for example, you have a machine shop and you bought the 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 building that the machine shop's in. Well, you might have the you might hold the title of the property uh, in the corporation of the machine shop. So that would be a, a corporation, and then they would want to see the articles of incorporation. But that's just another. It's just one more piece of paperwork. It's not just, that big a deal. Yeah, just another layer, right? Yeah, and the bank will tell you exactly what that. You know, if you said, "Hey, you know, I hold this property in trust," they're going to just say, "Okay, let me see the trust agreement uh, or, or the trust um, um, paperwork," which you should have in your file anyway. I mean, it's your trust. Yeah. Hey, I got a question for you. You yeah. uh, change up the conversation a little bit. What's on your to-do list this year? Well, there's a couple things. I, um, you know, now, I, I don't am, mean your goals. I mean your to-do list. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of things. So I want to, I want to, I have a couple manuscripts that I'm, I, I'm going to publish. Uh, number one, um, I'm going to kick in. Uh, we're doing a new podcast, me and another guy called uh, Wealth Wisdom Live. Okay. Um, and that's involved with, we're also, me and this other guy are involved with um, uh, some network marketing stuff. Um, I've, I've started a new venture with a couple of guys in real estate. So we're going to, you know, continue to, to do that. Um, but yeah, there's quite a few things. I mean, obviously your to-do list, you know, it changes, right? As you're checking things off. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is I'm, I'm very close to, I want to be completely debt-free. So I'm very close to being debt-free right now. Um, and there's a couple of things I need to, to work on. And, you know, Mike, it's interesting you say that because, you know, what I've done is I started attacking the smallest things first, right? So I've, I've been paying off things that are smaller, right? I've got a couple of big things that I still have to manage, but it gives me a really good feeling. There's nothing, there's no better feeling when you, when you, you close out something, right? You write that final check and you say, okay, now just, I want to close this account or I want to close this, could be a credit card or whatever, you know, or you write a letter and said, hey, you know, you know, this is putting closure to our relationship and here's the money, you know what I mean? So um, 
you know, if you're working on your debt, I, my recommendation would be start with the little stuff first, because that's the easiest stuff to knock off. And then, and then you can start to work on the bigger stuff because it really, from a mindset standpoint, it, you really feel like you've accomplished something. So, so that's interesting. You bring that up because it's kind of funny because yesterday I was kind of in this, I don't know, this place where I started working yesterday morning and you know, usually I don't do anything on New Year's Day, but I just, I'm trying to catch up because I've been so busy the last couple of weeks with phone calls and things. I haven't been able to do a lot of those things that need to get done. So yesterday I'm, you know, going through a lot of those little things. And what, what occurred to me was at the end of the day, I still had these two big projects that I hadn't done. I hadn't touched, (laughs) but I had got a hundred other things done. Right. So that becomes like, man, it's almost self-defeating. I, sometimes I think that I self-control for me sometimes means that, okay, I'm not going to do the little minutia till the end of the day. Even when I'm tired, I can do the little minutia. That yeah. stuff can wait. I have to get up in the morning and I have to tackle the big projects. I'll give you an example. I'm working on a, on a webinar right now, right? We revamped everything over the last couple months. So my core intentions is all new, branded new. It's all new logos and, and you know, everything. And, and you'll see as we start to roll this out. But my webinars are, oh, I need to be working on these to, to get a couple of these ready for presentations, right? And I keep putting it off, putting it off because I get so, I, I'll, I'll do 25 little things and then I run out of time to get yeah. to the big thing. So yeah. what, what I need to start doing is, is putting those little things at the backside of my to-do list. You know, years ago, I used to use a Franklin planner. Remember those? They were oh, handwritten. Yeah. 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 And, and so, you know, in the Franklin planner, they would say, okay, A, B, and C were the way you listed things, right? Your A stuff is your big stuff. The really hard things, right? The important phone calls you need to make that you might have a little fear around or, you know, need to negotiate a loan or do something like that. Those, those are your A's. Your B's are, you know, hey, um, I, I need to, um, you know, uh, book, book airplane tickets for a vacation coming up. And C right. is just you know, I need to change this and delete this from my book and, and things like that. Right. And, and those are the things that the order that we should look at things in, but what happens if we don't take care of those big things, we don't move the, the envelope forward. Yeah. Right? Well, and that's, yeah. And I, I couldn't agree with you more. You know, I, I have a, you know, I, I do individual one-on-one coaching and there's one client, you know, that he, he says he has ADD and, and I can appreciate that. And I said, well, you know what, you know, make, when you make your list, you know, just make, break it into different areas of your life, right? Like your, what do you want to do with your, your fitness, right? Your health and wellness. What do you want to do with your finances? What do you want to do with your profession or your business, right? What do you want to do with your, with your money, right? And it just pick two things in each category, you know, because what I found him doing was he was writing 15 things out, right? I was like, well, that's too much. It's too much. Just pick two things in those different areas and just work on those. And then prioritize it. And I told him this, this, which I thought was great advice was given to me by Bob Proctor years ago. He said, you know, eliminate, delegate, and then anticipate. And, he, and what he meant was like, look at the thing, the tasks, you know, that you have to do, right? And, 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 and look at the things you can eliminate, right? If there's something that you don't really have to do, just eliminate it, right? If there's something that's required to be done, but not required by you to do it, delegate it. Right. And then the things that are required for you to do, in other words, Mike has to touch this or Carl has to touch this. Then you anticipate those and you prioritize those. And that's when you use that A, B and C. Right. Like these are my priorities. He said, but first and foremost, eliminate anything that is not required for your success. Then delegate anything that's required that can be done by someone else and then anticipate the things and prioritize the things. And then you use that A, B, and C. So I totally get that. And then one other thing I just want to, I'll, I'll never forget this. Years ago, my dad and I played a trick on my brother and I, right? He had two two buckets. He had two mason jars and two buckets, right? Of stones and, and sand and stuff. And he said, okay, I want you to, I want you to put all the big things in first in your bucket, in your mason jar, or you put all the little things in first. And he said, which one do you think is going to be able to fit everything in, right? Well, at the end of the day, my brother took all the big things in and he put them in first and then in, in order of biggest to smallest, right? 
Well, he put it, he put the sand in last, right? He put all the big stones in and then the medium-sized stones and the little pebbles and then the sand. He fit everything in. I put all the little, the sand in first, then the pebbles. I couldn't get everything in because I did all the little things first, right? And mm. and so that's that analogy, that that visual, you know, what you're talking about is wow. yeah, do the big things first because the little things, you know, then when you pour the sand in, it fills in all the gaps. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so I never forgot that. And, and, you know, that was the lesson my dad was teaching us. Like do the big things first. Yeah. Boy, that, that is way. a, that is free. That's a pretty powerful metaphor. That's yeah. a pretty powerful story uh, that you shared. Hey, let me just cover a couple of things. Uh, there's some, uh, I just want to say hi to everybody who's on uh, Facebook Live this morning. If you have comments or questions, throw something in the chat. We'll try and get it answered. Hey, next week, we do not have any guests. The week after, we're going to start having guests again. I have, uh, I can't remember the individual's name, and I apologize for that, but we have somebody coming on. We're going to talk about multifamily investing. If anybody wants to be a guest on our show, and, they, uh, and we can bring value to your network, or you feel you can bring value to our listeners, let us know. We are very open to that on Saturday morning here. If a couple of people, you know, Carl, I still think that we should be having two, three people on on Saturday mornings with us. So if, uh, you know, just for conversation, right? I think this is Saturday mornings are great. Hey, grab your coffee, man. Enjoy the ride kind of deal, right? So uh, so yeah, that's important. Did we and, do that? We had a couple of people on once, didn't we? I thought we did. You know, we talked partners. about it, but we, 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 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we've done that, right? We yeah. had... Um, Boy, I can't remember who that was. But Brian and Doug. Is it Brian, Brian and Doug? Yeah, you're right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's right. Brian and Doug. Yep, for sure. So. And then hey, also, if, if you know anybody, if, you know, if, if they know, if they know somebody that they think would be a good guest, they should reach out to you as well. Correct. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. And so let me ask you this. You set any New Year's resolutions this year? You know, I'm not big on New Year's resolutions because I, I know that they, you know, for me, they usually fizzle out by January. But here's what I'll say, Mike. And I know you're big into fitness. You're, you're a big fitness guy. And, and you know, I joined a gym, right, okay. which I haven't been a member of a gym in a long time. Right. And I, you know, I joined a gym and um, I'm excited about going because they have a pool. What gym? Um, Shameless plug for the gym. Go ahead. It's called FFC, which is I don't know what that stands for. Fitness something clubs. FFC is what it's called. I think okay. they started in Chicago. Free fitness um, club? <laughs> no, it's not free. Darn. <laughs> I was hoping. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not free. But it's it, this particular, they have, I think they have 12 clubs in the Chicago area. Um, and this particular one that I go to, I, I have a locker. I pay extra for a locker. They actually do my laundry. So I leave all my stuff there, which is great for me because I can literally, if I have an extra hour in the day or they hour clean day, your can, apartment too. Yeah, I wish, but uh, <laughs> no, that, literally I have my own locker. I leave my stuff there. I come back, it's clean the next day, right? So I don't have to carry a bag and it's really, it's really convenient. You know, I mean, it costs a little bit more, but it's, it's worth it. But they have a pool, they have a boxing. I like to hit the boxing bags, you know, they have, I mean, it's really great. It's a great little gym. Well, can I, can I just ask, give me a price range? I think I'd pay 180 bucks a month. Whoa, man, that's. Yeah. Hey, listen, I go to Planet Fitness, I pay 10. Yeah. <laughs> so there's yeah. a little little disparity, but I don't have any of that other stuff. Hey, listen, we're not even allowed to use a locker right now, or we can't bring a gym bag in because, oh, really? yeah, they want it on you, you know. I, so listen, I'm hoping by, uh, you know, by the end of first quarter, second quarter here that we are back to, I saw a commercial on TV yesterday and i was like oh god would this be great they said it's almost over and people are hugging well pretty soon before you know it, we'll be back to hugging people and uh sitting next to people in restaurants and movie theaters and and this commercial was like it was almost like an old hallmark or at&t commercial right but um it was about being together and people you know so i'm certainly looking forward to that and and yeah. you know being able to to you know you know, what's interesting is I ever walk through the grocery store or, you know, the mall and you see somebody, you smile at them, right? You can, you look at people today with, with a mask on, you can't even tell if somebody's smiling at you or, or what, 
actually, <laughs> you know, so, so it's kind of funny, you know, you got a wink and then. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it is kind of, it is kind of, uh, it is different. And, you know, my sister, I have an older sister who's 65 and she's, she's in a little bit higher risk because, you know, because of her, you know, she's a little, uh, she's got diabetes and, you know, stuff like that. So she, yeah, she was just like, you know, I love you, but I, I'm, I just want to keep my distance. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I totally understand, you know, and, and my, my teenage kids were with us, you know, and so they were, you know, they couldn't hug grandma and grandpa and, Yes, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm looking forward to it too, Mike, because, you know, we're yeah. human beings. We, you know, we want that interaction. We want that closeness, you know what I mean? And even shaking someone's hand, you know what I mean? It's just, there's something, there's a reason why we started doing that years and years and years ago, because it's just a connection. You're just one step connected more. So, yeah, I think we're all going to get back to that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I hope so. I, you know, it's a, I think there's a major necessity about, you know, there's some human needs that people need touching and, yeah. and hugging and, you know, that interaction, there's a physical interaction um, that, you know, and heck, I'm a hugger, man. I hate, yeah. you know, I hate meeting people or, or leaving a meeting and not being able to give somebody a hug. I, I mean, yeah. that's just, that's my nature. I've always been like that, you know, so. Yeah, yeah isn't it funny that you, you go to do it and you kind of get different reactions? Because I just, I'm the same way. Hey, you know, I, here's a story. Listen, uh, it was probably about a week ago, 25 people show up at the door Christmas caroling one evening. And uh, so somebody knocks on the door, I open the door, and she says, Hey, we're here to Christmas carol. I said, great. So I stood on the porch and, and they sang a couple songs. And, and I said to this woman on the porch, I said, ah, give me a hug. She looked at me like, I said, ah, screw it. Come on, give me a hug. You know, <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. That's but funny. you know, I mean, it's funny. It, it, it's sad. So, yeah. Well, you know, my brother and I went out to dinner last night and, you know, we, we, in the lobby of the restaurant, you know, we shook each other's hands and we kind of give that man hug, you know what I mean? And, and the girl behind the thing was, and I said to her, I was like, don't worry, he's my brother. You know, like, like she looked at me like, you guys aren't supposed to be doing that. You know, and I, I literally, you know, the, the hostess, and I literally said, oh, don't worry, we're, you know, he's my brother. Like, you know, yeah. don't worry about it, right? And so, you know, what can you do? Hey, uh, listen, here, here's what's crazy, right? It's the, all, you know, here we are in a time in our life where you can't eat inside, but you can build a building in the parking lot to eat inside of that building. <laughs> well you know what that, but you know mike that's interesting because you know let, i mean how does this come back to real estate you know in real estate you know the beautiful thing about real estate is there's so many different ways points of entry and it's for the creative thinker you know it's, it's right. you know the, the people that are doing that are looking at the situation and they're getting creative right they're saying okay how can we be creative and keep our business going and abide by the laws or whatever, whatever, you know, executive orders or whatever. And that's the other beautiful thing about real estate is there's always, you know, listen, this whole exercise about looking at my parents' wills and trust, you know, this is, this is new to me, right? Right. So even with as much experience as you and I have, there's always new things to learn. There's always new challenges. There's always new opportunities to be creative or, or to redesign you know, the future that you're creating, right, with real estate. And that's one of the things I, you know, I really love about real estate is it's, it's, it's always changing and morphing and it keeps you, which means there's always opportunities, right? There's always opportunities for people to, to rethink or, 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 or repurpose or reuse. You know, a lot of these, you know, a lot of these uh, retail stores that are going out of business, you know, someone's going to come in and, and see an opportunity and they're going to repurpose those, right? And, it, you know, it, for something or another, or, or, you know, um, there's just opportunities to repurpose, to reuse, to rethink, to recreate. And that's one of the things I know that you love about real estate too. And, and I love, I love what you just said, how you brought that into perspective about repurposing, you know, people always talk about fix and flips and value adds and, and repairs and upgrade, but you know, it's repurposing. How do you repurpose a property? You know, listen, and I'm going to say this again, I believe in my heart of hearts and I've been looking at the numbers and I've been walking down this road recently where there is big business to be had in this small multifamily flip business. And if, if anybody wants to hear more about that, get more involved, ex experience that I'll be doing a presentation on a Monday night meetup in the next couple of weeks on it. But I am 
convinced that it is it's an opportunity for people to get involved with so well, you know and, and keep me posted on that mike because i know i know that you're doing it you're doing it what people are going to learn are what you're doing because you're actually looking at it for yourself so you're going to yeah they're going to be along for the ride they're going to hitch their wagon to your horses right and they're going to they're going to you're going to uh share with them what you're experiencing i could agree with you more and you know the beautiful thing is about those smaller properties. There's less competition from the big boys, right? And um, there's there's more properties out there. You're, you're gonna find more uh, properties. You know, in Chicago, there's 72,000 people that own multifamily buildings, right? The vast majority are, are the smaller properties, right? And they may only own one or two buildings. What does that tell me? That tells me that that segment of the market, there's really great opportunities in those smaller multifamily. And listen, you can build a portfolio in 10 years. You can build a portfolio. If you buy 10 buildings that are all five to six unit buildings, you're going to have 50 or 60 units in 10 years. And that may be all that you that's that you're looking to do. You know what I mean? So I couldn't agree with you more. There's real opportunity there. So you're you're talking about you're talking about some things right now that I, you know, I have a question. You know, when usually on Saturday morning when I start to get ready for this, I'll write out a few things to chat about. But I wrote down a question. And here's what I wrote down. What are you doing differently? So you know how I am about questions. And I've always, I always come from the place that if you take a question and you write down 10 to 20, and Tony Robbins always talks about 20 answers to that question, right? And here's what happens. The first one through five answers, they're kind of scratching the surface, right? But you get down to 17, 18, 19, and 20, that's where your real meat is. That's where your real answers are. So write this question down for yourself. What are you going to do differently? Or what are you doing differently? See, because if we continue to do what we've always done, we're going to continue to get what we've always gotten, right? That's what they call the definition of insanity too. All right. So, yep. but what I want you to think about is what can you do differently? One thing is, you know, one of the answers is, hey, open my eyes take a look around a little bit more about what's going on in the market, what's going around in my neighborhood. Listen, if you get up every day and you go to work the same way and you go to the corner and you turn right and you go to the corner and you turn left, hey, go the other way. Go to the corner and turn left, turn left. Go drive down a different street. Whose grass is growing longer? Whose house is falling apart? Who's got a couple abandoned cars in the driveway? Hey, what do you need to look for? What do you need to open your eyes to, to look at things a little bit differently? Because as soon as we start looking at the, at the world around us with a different perspective and a, diff, a different vision, things start to change. And yeah. when those things start to change, we can start to see opportunity. And it's about seeing opportunity. So when I talk about this small multifamily uh, opportunity and the repurposing of some of these, you know, hey, do you ever think about taking a two flat and deconverting it back to a single family house? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So when you start to think about different opportunities, different philosophies, you know, it, it changes everything. Yeah, and, no, I and wait, let me just, let me just say this real quick. Um, yeah. But I want to talk about change. So when, when you talk about doing something differently, what are you doing for yourself differently? Because because really, on the outside of us, nothing changes till we change on the inside. So yeah. are, you, are you spending any money this year on education? Are you spending any money this year on things that are going to make you a better person? Hey, pick up a real estate book, go to a seminar. Uh, this is real estate. But you know, listen, if you're struggling with something else, pick up a self help book, you know, so I just want to I just want to bring value to people this year that that I can help them see a different light, do something differently, and experience things better. Yeah, and I totally agree with you. You know, I, it's all about mindset to me, you know, it's it's the old, you know, be do have as opposed to have do be right. So right. it's, you know, really, we do things in reverse. You know, I, you know, people say, well, you know, when I have a million dollars, I'll do what a millionaire does and then I'll be a millionaire, right? Well, no, <laughs> the really way to do it is you start to be a millionaire before you have any money in your bank account, right? So you start yeah. to, you change your thinking, right? It starts from within and you start to be 
the person that you, you you're going to be, and then you'll start to do the things a millionaire does, and then eventually you'll and you'll you'll end up being a millionaire. So people I totally do agree. that all. People do that. I'm sorry. People do that all the time about giving money away, right? Tithing to the church or tithing to a foundation or something that's close to your heart, right? Is hey, you know what? I only make ten dollars a week now, so I can't. You know, a dollar is not going to help anybody. But when I make when I make a hundred dollars a week, I'll give ten away. Well, it's a lot harder to give more away if you're not in the discipline of it along the way. So yeah. start today with with a little, because then when you when you grow that, now it's easier when you have more. Yeah, and it's who it's about who you're being, right? It doesn't yep. it doesn't it's not about what you have. It's about who you're being. And right to your point, it's all about mindset. It's about changing, you know, shifting the way you think um, to shift the results that you'll get. And you'll, I think it's Jim Rohn or, or, or Zig Ziglar, somebody said, or it might've been Dr. Dyer, who I love. He said, you know, he said, wow. when you, when you, when you change the, the way you look at things, the things you look at change, right? And that's, that's the only, the other one I love is the only thing that's constant in this world is change. Yeah. Change is always happening, right? And that's the only thing, nothing remains constant. Everything is changing. So, you know, look at what you can shift in your in your way of being, your way of thinking. And, and, you know, you and I are both hot, big on education, on reading and learning and, um, you, you know, continue to grow because that's so, you know, that little bit of money that you invest in, in a program or a book or coaching is going to pay you dividends. You can't even imagine the dividends is going to pay you 10, 15, 20 years down the road. Right. It, when you get trained, how to, you know, uh, how to shift your way of being, because that's, you know, that's, that's the key thing. You know, yeah. hey, the only uh, only things you can expect for sure are change and the end of the show today, because yeah. it's time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, right, well, listen, listen I've been hey. yeah, I, I've been offline for for a couple of weeks here with vacation, but I'm looking forward to 2021, Mike. Let's stay. Let's get back in touch. We haven't talked in a little bit, but you know, let's yeah. Uh, yeah. let's talk this week and uh, you know, let's catch up. Let's go grab a cup of coffee for real. Yeah, for sure. We could circle up here pretty quick and. Uh, couple, you know, a couple weeks of spring will be hitting and be out. Yep. So, Hey, um, I appreciate you. Thank you for, uh, the past several months and, and our friendship. And I'm, I'm grateful for that and for your support and, and everything you bring to the table, your knowledge and, and your wisdom. So, uh, thank you for that. And I'm, I appreciate it. Likewise, great- Mike, likewise. Oh, thank you. And so, hey, what I want to say is if anybody out there has any questions, either for Carl or for myself, go to our websites and find us. I'm at mycoreintentions.com. Carl is at uh, the focus guy, your focus guy. So, you know, hey, you can find us on Meetup. You can find us on LinkedIn, on Facebook, social media. Go like us, love us, do all those things, help support us. And anything that we can do, if you have a question and listen, no questions ever too small, too big, too silly, it, you know, come to us. If we don't have an answer, we'll go find somebody who does. Cause we have pretty big networks. So, and that's really important. So, Hey, okay, Mike. Yep. Thanks, have a great thanks, week, buddy. man. Yep. Blessings. And uh, we'll catch up soon. Bye everybody.